ان الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا ومن سيئات اعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له واشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له واشهد ان محمدا عبده ورسوله صلى الله عليه وعلى اله وسلم تسليما كثيرا يا ايها الذين امنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن الا وانتم مسلمون يا ايها الناس اتقوا ربكم الذي خلقكم من نفس واحده وخلق منها زوجها وبث منهم هما رجالا كثيرا ونساء واتقوا الله الذي تساءلون به والارحام ان الله كان عليكم رقيبا يا ايها الذين امنوا اتقوا الله وقولوا قولا سديدا يصلح لكم اعمالكم ويغفر لكم ذنوبكم ومن يطع الله ورسوله فقد فاز فوزا عظيما اما بعد فان اصدق الحديث كتاب الله in the most truthful of speech the best of words are the words in the speech of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wa khayru al-hadi hadi Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and the best guidance we have is the guidance of our beloved messenger Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam wa sharru al-umuri muhdathatuha and the worst of affairs are those things we newly invent into this religion of ours wa kullu muhdathatin bid'ah and everything we newly invent into this religion of ours is an innovation. And every innovation is misguidance and it leads astray. Every going astray, every misguidance is in the hellfire. قال ابن مفلح الحنبلي رحمه الله تعالى من عجيب ما رأيت ونقدت من أحوال الناس كثرة ما ناحوا على خراب الديار وموت الأقارب والأسلاف والتحسر على قلة الأرزاق وذم الزمان وأهله وذكر نقد العيش فيه والحديث عن غلاء الأصاعد وجور الحكام وقد رأوا من انهدام الإسلام والبعد عن المساجد وموت السنن وتفش وتفش البدع وارتكاب المعاصي فلا اجد منهم من ناح على دينه ولا بكى على تقصيره ولا اسى على فائت ظهره وما ار وما ارى لذلك سببا الا قله مبالاتهم بدين الاسلام وعظم الدنيا في عيونهم <تصفيق> Ibn Muflih al-Hanbali rahimahullah, he said of the matters that surprised me and made me wonder about some people's situations. They wail, meaning they cry to a level which is not just simple, to the point of making their cry audible. They wail over their country's destruction. They wail over their deceased loved ones and their predecessors. They complain about the loss of provisions. They slander time and their society. They complain about this life being rough and difficult. They complain about the increase of what things cost and the prices of merchandise. They complain about the injustice of the rulers. And they have seen in their own eyes the destruction of Islam. And the masajid being empty. And they have forgotten and, and the forgotten Sunnah of the Prophet ﷺ, and the spread of innovations and bid'ah and the committing of evil and sins. He said, But I do not see any of these people crying or wailing over their faith, nor over their shortcomings, nor about their past. And the reason for all of this is that they're careless about their deen, and because they glorify this dunya too much. This statement is one <clears throat> which summarizes especially what the people are upon today. And if this was in his time, this was about 700 some years ago that he made this statement, it is even more so now. The people wailing about their countries and their deceased, wailing about what things cost and the difficulty of this life. 
but having no regard for the masajid being empty, the sunnah being abandoned, the Qur'an being abandoned, and the likes of these matters. So let us look at this statement. So Ibn Mutlih al-Maqdisi, he again was in 1300s, yani 700 years after the, hij- the hijra, from Mecca to Medina, and this statement is more true today than ever. So what he said in the beginning, مِنْ عَجِيبِ مَا رَأَيْتُ وَنَقَّدْتُ مِنْ أَحْوَالِ النَّاسِ كَثْرَةُ مَا نَاحُ عَلَى خَرَابِ الْدِيَارِ وَمَوْتِ الْأَقَارِبُ وَالْأَسْلَافِ وَالتَّحَسُّرْ عَلَى قِلَّةِ الْأَرْزَاقِ وَذَمِّ الزَّمَانِ وَأَهْلُهُ وَذِكْرِ نَكَدِ الْعِيشِ فِيهِ وَالْحَدِيثِ وَالْحَدِيثِ عَنْ غَلَاءِ الْأَسَاعِدِ وَجُورِ الْحُكَّامِ of the matters that surprised me and made me wonder about the people's situations, wailing about their country's destruction. This is what most people discuss about, their homeland. This takes up most discussions between the people, the wars going on there, the situation of the people, the situation of the governments and the rulers. They wail over their dead and their predecessors, complaining about the the loss of provision. They complain about these things even though Allah, He said, وَلَنَبْلُوَنَّكُمْ بِشَيْءٍ مِّنَ الْخَوْفِ وَالْجُوعِ وَنَقَسٍ مِّنَ الْأَمْوَالِ وَالْأَنفُسِ وَالثَّمَرَاتِ وَبَشِّرَ الصَّابِرِينَ Allah says what means. And we believe in the Qur'an. We believe it's the speech and the word of Allah SWT. He says what means. And surely we will test you with something of fear. We will test you with hunger. We will test you with the loss of wealth. We will test you with the love, the loss of lives of loved ones. We will test you with the loss of loss of fruits, but give glad tidings, good tidings to those who are patient. This was promised, and if you're patient during this, Allah will reward you extensively. The people they slander, they vilify, they criticize time and society, even though time is something Allah swore by. How dare you criticize or complain about something that Allah made so great that He swore by it. When He said, By time, by the token of time. Allah only swears by things which are grand. Why is time so grand? Because once it passes, ain't nothing you can do to get it back. A trillion dollars won't get you one second past this moment. This is why Allah swore by it to show its importance, its magnificence. He said, Indeed, mankind is truly in loss. Except for those who believe and do righteous deeds and they enjoin the truth upon the people and they are patient and they enjoin patience, they are patient with the da'wah that they give. So Allah swore by it. The people, they wail, they cry, they complain about the difficulty in this life. Even though we have ayat and hadith that prove that Allah will reward you in those struggles, with those struggles. قَالَ رَسُولُ اللَّهِ صَلَّى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمْ مَنْ يُرَضَ اللَّهُ بِهِ خَيْرٍ يُصُدْ مِنْهُمْ The Prophet ﷺ, he said, if Allah wants good for you, He tests you and He tries you. He, try, he challenges you, puts you through trials. We just passed two weeks mentioning hadith after hadith, how Allah will forgive you and forgive you. You go through so much here, hatta shoka, even the prick of a thorn. When you go to pick a benefit He gave you, a rose or, or a lemon or whatever it may be, even in those times He will wipe away sins just because of the hardship you endured. Complaining about the rough and difficult life, complaining that things just cost too much, and complaining about the injustice of the rulers. Again, this is always a topic of discussion amongst the people. Instead of making dua for the rulers, they're criticizing them and condemning them. Some go to the level of making takfir against them, saying that they are kuffar or disbelievers. And this is not from the aqidah of our righteous predecessors, from the creed of the Salaf al Salih, the companions, the tabi'in, and the tabi'in. Allah says, اعلموا أن من حياة الدنيا لعب وله وزينة وتفاخر بينكم وتكاثر في الأموال والأولاد كمثل غيث أعجب الكفار نباته ثم يهيج 
فتراه مصر مصرا ثم يكون حطاما وفي الآخرة عذاب شديد ومغفرة من الله ورضوان وما الحياة الدنيا إلا متاع الغرور Allah says what means know that this life is just a life of amusement and entertainment know that this life is just a life of diversion diverting you away from what is important the life that will be eternal the life of the akhirah that this is a life of adornment that this is a life of boasting against one another competition who has more money who has more children this is what this life is to the people like the example of a rain the rain comes so it causes what is in the ground to grow and it gives yani provision and then it dries out and you see it turn yellow and then it becomes scattered by the wind to be nothing and in the hereafter is a severe punishment but there is also forgiveness from Allah and approval and what is the worldly life except the enjoyment of delusion what is this life except an enjoyment of a delusion because this life isn't forever it's temporary so why get all thrilled about it always keep this mind in your mind and in perspective Allah he said ma asaba min musibatin fil ardi wala fi anfusikum illa fi kitab min qabl an nabraha inna hadha inna dhalika ala Allah yasir Allah says what means no disaster strikes upon the earth or within yourselves except that it's in a book in a register before it's brought into existence indeed that for Allah is easy 50,000 years before Allah created the heavens and the earth khalaqa al-qalam he created the pen faqala al-qalam uktub he told the pen to write qala ya rabbi wa madha aktub he said oh, oh, oh my lord what shall i write he said to the pen uktub maqadir kull shay hatta taqum as-sa'a as-sa'a he said write down everything that's going to happen until the end of time it's all written down No good can you bring yourself unless Allah wills it. No harm can you prevent from yourself unless Allah wills it. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he continued in the next ayah لِكَيْ لَا تَأْسَوْ عَلَى مَا فَاتُكُمْ وَلَا تَفْرَحُوا بِمَا آتَاكُمْ وَاللَّهُ لَا يُحِبُّ كُلْ مَخْتَانٍ فَخُورٍ Allah then continues in the next ayah to say in order that you may you not despair over what has eluded you. what has missed you that you wanted or that was meant for you but it missed you do not despair about this do not get depressed over it do not think you lost out on something because it is your lord who decreed it and not exult in pride over what he's been given what has been given to you do not get all proud and boastful and arrogant if you have wealth if you have status if you have this or that amongst the people because this is what allah has given you It's not your hard work, your hands, your money, your efforts that get you what you have. We think it's us. But it can never happen without the qadr of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and Allah decreeing that for us. So don't puff yourself up in pride by what you have thinking you earned it. Because you didn't earn nothing. Allah wrote for you to have that as a test to see how you would live and act. And Allah does not like everyone who is self-deluded and boastful. Always remember this hadith. An Abi Hurairah radiyallahu anhu qala qala Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam anzuru ila man huwa asfal minkum wa la tanzuru ila man huwa fawqakum fa huwa ajdaru an fa huwa ajdaru an la tazdaru ni'mat Allah alaykum. This hadith which is in Bukhari and Muslim the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said when you look at your life and you're going to compare or you're going to can't put in contrast your life and somebody else's look at those below you not those above you so you don't belittle Allah's blessings to you because the one who looks at those above him is always saying Allah has not given me enough Allah has wronged me he's questioning why he doesn't have what others have but the one who looks below him the one who's always looking at those who have less health less wealth less food on their table less clothing less security less anything when you look at those below you this is the one who truly can praise and thank Allah and they count their blessings so always remember this hadith because on any given day the weakest of us of us the poorest of us is still richer than a billion people in the world if not more than that 
Ibn Muflih, he continued, he said, وَقَدْ رَأَوْ مِنْ إِنْهِدَامِ الْإِسْلَامِ وَالْبُعْدَ عَنِ الْمَسَاجِدِ وَمَوْتِ السُّنَنِ وَتَفْشِ الْبِدَعِ وَارْتِقَابِ الْمَعَاصِي He continued to say, these same people who cry and wail about all these dunya things, they have seen with their own eyes the destruction of Islam. Not just masajid being destroyed, but the lives of Muslims being destroyed. They've seen the destruction of Islam. This can even include abandoning the Qur'an, abandoning the Sunnah. They have seen the masajid that are built nice and big, being empty, except on Jum'ah and Ramadan and Eid and the likes of those matters. They have seen the Sunnah of the Prophet ﷺ forgotten. They have seen the Sunnah abandoned. From the best of things, from the Salah, to the Afkar, to the way we do Tasbih, to how we abandon giving the zakat, zakat al-mal and the sadaqah on top of those things. How we make hajj, how we treat one another, abandoning the sunnah. We see these things and we see the spread of innovations, bid'ah. Some people don't like that word, get used to it. Because that is what is rotting this deen from the inside, not the deen itself, the people who follow it. Because an innovation is you saying, I want to choose something other than the sunnah of the, Rasul, the Prophet ﷺ. When you innovate, or you take something that's not from Allah or His Messenger ﷺ, this is indeed what you're saying. I got a better way of doing this. Go ahead and meet Allah if you want to choose that up with that mindset on the day of resurrection. You won't be able to come back and change your course. They see the innovation spreading, and the people committing it, and the evil and the sin spreading. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he says, إِنَّ الَّذِينَ لَا يُؤْمِنُونَ بِالْآخِرَةِ زَيَّنَّا لَهُمْ أَعْمَالُهُمْ فَهُمْ يَعْمَهُونَ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he says, what means indeed for those who do not believe in the hereafter, we have made pleasing for them, to them, their deeds, so they wander, they wander blindly. They wander blindly. We see the destruction of the ummah, and we're turning another eye. We're not seeing the destruction in our ummah, for what it really is coming from, we're blaming it. This is the fault of America, of Israel, of Iran, or whatever. Any destruction we see is at our own hands fault. Because we choose to abandon the Quran and the Sunnah. As understood and lived by the Salaf al-Salih, the righteous predecessors. The Sahaba, the Tabi'een, the Tabi'een. Tab- Allah has made pleasing the deeds of this life. The person who sees this is blind because he's more concerned with this dunya than he is with his akhirah. Abdullah ibn Mas'ud radiallahu anhu, he said, حافظوا على هؤلاء الصلوات الخمس حيث ينادى بهن فإنهن من سنن الهدى وإن الله شرع لنبيه صلى الله عليه وسلم سنن الهدى ولقد رأيتنا وما يتخلف عنها إلا منافق بين بين مناف بين النفاق. عبد الله بن مسعود he says preserve or persevere in observing the five daily prayers where the announcement of the prayer is made where the adhan is called because they are from the paths of right guidance and Allah the Almighty the Majestic he has laid down for his Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم the paths of right guidance. Uh, he said, I have seen a time when no one stayed away from the prayer except for a hypocrite whose hypocrisy was well known. Staying away from praying in the masjid. He said, I witnessed a time where a man would come to the prayer swaying between two companions who had to hold him so he could reach their meaning. He was physically lacking the capability to come on his own. But he still came between two people till they set him up in the row. Every one of us has then he continued to say, وَلَوْ صَلَّيْتُمْ فِي بَيُوتِكُمْ وَتَرَقْتُمْ مَسَاجِدِكُمْ تَرَقْتُمْ سُنَّةَ نَبِيِّكُمْ صَلَّى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهُ وَسَلَّمْ وَلَوْ تَرَقْتُمْ سُنَّةَ نَبِيِّكُمْ صَلَّى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهُ وَسَلَّمْ لَضَلَّلْتُمْ He said, and if you were to pray in your homes and stay away from the masajid, this would be clearly, without doubt, abandoning the sunnah of your Prophet ﷺ and whoever abandons his sunnah وسلم, then this person has been led astray, is misguided, misguided and disobedient. In this hadith, 
is authentic by Shaykh al-Albani uh, Al in the Sunan of Abi Dawood. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he says, أَفَرَأَيْتَ مَنْ اتَّخَذَ إِلَهُهُ هَوَاهُ وَأَضَلَّهُ اللَّهُ عَلَى عِلْمُ وَخَتَمَ عَلَى سَمْعِهِ وَقَلْبِهِ وَجَعَلَ عَلَى بَصْرِهِ غَشَاوَةِ فَمَنْ يَهْدِيهِ مِنْ بَعْدِ اللَّهِ أَفَلَا تَذَكَّرُونَ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he says what means, have you seen the one who takes as his God? Instead of Allah, he takes his desires as his God. And Allah has sent him astray due to knowledge and has set a seal upon his hearing and upon his heart. And he put a veil over his eyesight, over his vision. So who will guide him after Allah? Then will you not be reminded in this day and age and on all, in all honesty. For the most part, even the ones who worship Allah are also worshiping money. Or are also worshiping the one they love. Or are also worshiping their children. Or are also worshiping yani, gains in this life. Because of what they're pursuing. This is not the way we're going to want to meet Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We mentioned bid'ah, that the people see this. They see innovation. The Prophet ﷺ, he said in Khutbat al Hajjah, what we read every Jum'ah, what he read before all his introductions and his speeches. The worst of affairs are those things will be invented into the religion. Everything you say and do that did not come from Allah or his Messenger ﷺ, or his Sahaba radiallahu anhum ardahum. This is an innovation. This is a bid'ah. Every one of these innovations, even if it seems good to you, even if it's a good practice in your eyes, every one of those is an innovation. It is balala, it is misguidance, and it leads astray. Every going astray, every misguidance is in the hellfire. Every single one. Imam al Shafi'i, he said that a person meets Allah with every major sin. That you met Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and you committed every major sin, but you did not innovate, you did not commit any bid'ah. You practiced the Quran, you practiced the sunnah of the Prophet the way it was revealed. It's better, this person is better, afwan, that a person meets Allah with every sin, but did not commit shirk. It is better than meeting Allah upon any one of the bid'ahs, any one of the innovative beliefs. That you meet Allah having committed every sin you could commit. Every sin, even the major ones. But you did not commit shirk. You only worshipped Allah alone without partners. In every way of ibadah, you only worshipped Allah. You're better off than the one who meets Allah without those sins, but he's innovating, committing bid'ah in the deen. Is it that worth it? Is it that worth it that you... Keep those in your life once you're made aware and made known that this has nothing to do with the sunnah of the Prophet Sallallahu that the Sahaba did not do this or say this or use this. The choice is yours. إن الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونستهديه ونصلي ونسلم على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم تسليما كثيرا وبعد ابن المصلح الحمد لله رحمه الله he went on to say فلا أجد فلا أجد منهم من ناح على دينه ولا بكى على تقصيره ولا آسى على فائت ظهره وما أرى لذلك لذلك سببا إلا قلة مبالاتهم بدين الإسلام وعدم الدنيا في عيونهم. He went on to say, and this for those who had come and late, he mentioned in the beginning. You see the people nowadays. They cry. They wail. They slap their cheeks. They tear their clothes over the death of a loved one or someone who has passed. They do the same at the destruction of their countries. They complain and complain and complain about يعني, the prices of things going up, about uh, the prices of things going up, about the, the, the rulers of their countries or their lands and the likes of these matters. Yet they see the destruction of Islam. They see the Sunnah being abandoned. They see the Quran being abandoned. They see the Masajid being empty. They see the people innovating in the deen. And so he then says, but I don't see any of those people wailing or crying over their faith, over their deen, nor wailing over their shortcomings, nor over their past. 
And the, per, the reason for all of this, the reason for all of this is because they are careless about their deen and because they glorify this dunya too much. They give it priority in their eyes. The prize for the people is this dunya, it's not Jannah. We talk about Jannah, we describe Jannah. It's described throughout the Quran and the Sunnah. Yet how many of us really, really, really believe it's a place you can enter? And it's not just lip service. They magnify the importance of this world. Okay, so we get to it. We're human. We have hearts. We have mercy. That's good, because Allah, He told us, مَن لَا يَرْحَمَ النَّاسِ لَمْ لَا يَرْحَمَهُ اللَّهِ Who is not merciful to the people, Allah will not be merciful to him. قَالَ رَسُولَ اللَّهِ صَلَى اللَّهِ عَلَى إِنَّ الرِّفْقِ لَا يَكُونُ فِي شَيْءٍ إِلَّا زَانَةٍ Being kind, being gentle, is not associated with something except that it beautifies it. And being harsh, being mean-spirited, is not associated with something except that it leaves it defective. In this hadith in Sahih Muslim. My dear brothers and sisters in Islam, I say this because you're going to have feelings of love, compassion, for things that are important from this life. That's not what we're saying to not do. You're going to love the ones you love. You're going to be sad if they pass away. You're going to be sad if they came to visit and they're leaving. But look at the picture. You will cry for days when you know that someone who came to visit you, a loved one, a parent, a brother or sister, a child, they're with you. As they get closer to the day they're leaving to the airport, the emotions start to settle in, the sadness, the quietness. Then the day comes where they leave and there's crying and crying on the way to the airport, in the airport, waiting for them. The voices are being raised in those tears. Right? How is this fair? How is this right? How can we face Allah when we cry at everything but not at our deen? How can we cry for this dunya but we don't cry for the sins we committed? How can we cry for this dunya when we don't cry when we see Muslims across the world being battered and butchered, slaughtered and raped? Organs being removed from some of them intentionally to sell, to get a price for somebody to make some money. People being killed for their, their Islam by those who worship multiple gods because they're Muslim and no other reason. Do we cry over the sins we commit knowing that the person يعني, from the seven promised Jannah, the last one mentioned, من ذكر الله خاليا فقادت عينا the one who remembers Allah when he's by himself or by herself and their eyes they fill with tears why? they remember their sins they know Allah will question them they know that scale will come out and weigh their deeds just like the scale and the markets that weigh the food they know their deeds will be weighed how fair is it that we cry out everything but not our deed we lose 20 bucks we'll spend a whole day looking for it our iPhone's misplaced, or it drops, or it cracks. We cry, we go crazy, we despair. My gosh, it's like the life is over. We miss a prayer, ah, who cares? Fajr, ah, I'll do it tomorrow, or later. Jama, ah, I got a sale to make. It's more, more, more fun than I make the money. This is what you gotta cry about. This is what you gotta face yourself with. Be fair. Look at yourself in the mirror. Question yourself. Question yourself with how you're living this life. If you cut off and lose Allah by not praying, because the hadith mentions, فَقَدْ كَفَرْ مَنْ تَرَقَ الصَّلَاةُ فَقَدْ كَفَرْ Right? The one who leaves the prayer, he has committed kufr, he's committed disbelief. Then you've lost everything. Here, don't you have all the money in the world. The whole, all America is yours. In your name. Here it is. You got nothing. You got nothing when you meet Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You're as good as broke, if not a loser, and beyond that. If you cut off Allah by stopping your prayers, and disobeying Him, and not returning to repentance, and to seeking His forgiveness, then we should be يعني, shedding tears and upon tears and tears, having remorse. For the parents, when your children see a prayer time come in and you don't pray, or you're picking them up from the masjid at a prayer time and you're sitting in your car, you should cry for days, days for just that one action. My dear brothers and sisters in Islam, Prophet Muhammad he said, لَوْ تَعْلَمُونَ مَا أَعْلَمْ لَبَكِتُمْ قَلِيلًا وَلَبَكِتُمْ كَثِيرًا 
Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam said in the hadith, which is Hassan in Sunnah of Tirmidhi, he said, "If you knew what I knew, you would laugh a little and you would cry a lot." And we're living a life the opposite. We're living a life the opposite way. Everything is about laughter, entertainment, happiness. This is okay, but not if it's everything. Be honest. Face yourself. Question yourself. Weigh what you cry about and what you worry about. Are you ever that worried about needing Allah, your sins? Of course, He's Ghafoor Rahim. We just spent two weeks discussing how Allah will forgive if you came with the sins, the, the level of the, 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 the heavens and the earth and the ocean. If you had that many sins, He would forgive you. So keep this in mind. Allah is not going to look as it says in the authentic hadith. In Allah, لا ينظر إلى صوركم وأموالكم ولكن إنما ينظر إلى إلى أعمالكم وقلوبكم. Allah is not going to look at your wealth or how good looking you are. He's going to look at your heart and your deeds. So my dear brothers and sisters in Islam, know this without a doubt. فأما من طغى وآخر الحياة الدنيا فإن الجحيم هي المأوى. Whoever disobeys Allah, transgresses the bounds, and prefers the life of this world, then indeed Jahannam will be his abode forever. وَأَمَّا مَنْ خَافَ مَقَامَ رَبِّهِ وَنَهَا النَّفْسَ عَنْ الْهَوَى فَإِنَّ الْجَنَّةَ هِيَ الْمَأْوَى And for him who fears the position of his Lord and prevented the soul from its unlawful inclinations doing the haram, then indeed paradise will be his refuge. My dear brothers and sisters in Islam, the value of this world is nothing. كَمَا قَالَ رَسُولَ اللَّهِ صَلَى اللَّهِ وَسَلَّمْ لَوْ كَانَتَ الدُّنْيَا تَعَدِلُ عِنْدَ اللَّهِ جناح بعودة ما سقى كافرا كافرا منها شربة ماء. The Prophet ﷺ said in the authentic hadith in the Sunnah of Tirmidhi, if this life was worth the wing of a mosquito, I don't know about you, but I can barely see mosquitoes. The wing of that mosquito, if this life was worth that wing of a mosquito, he would not have let even a person who disbelieved in him to have a sip, a drop of water, a drop of water. My dear brothers and sisters in Islam, yes, we will have love for certain things in this life. It's okay. Yes, you can have it with deepness. You can have sadness and remorse. You can be sad when you see things that are naturally humanly saddening. But be fair to yourself. Be fair to your soul. Your body and your soul, which will stand before Allah on the day of resurrection with your deeds being weighed and question yourself. How often do you wail and cry and worry about the meeting before Allah? About being questioned in the grave? About walking over that bridge in Jahannam, whether you'll fall into Jahannam or make it to Jannah? That should be part of your balance in life. May Allah make us from those who are aware of these things, those who are concerned with their deen and the deen of our ummah, and make us from those who are protected from just divulging into this life. اللهم اغفر للمسلمين والمسلمات المؤمنين والمؤمنات الاحياء منهم والاموات انك انت سميع قريب مجيب الدعوات يا مقلب القلوب ثبت قلوبنا على دينك سبحان ربك رب العزه عما يصفون وسلام على المرسلين والحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله على نبينا محمد وعلى اله وصحبه وسلم تسليما كثيرا